In this week's episode, shipping rates are going up, except where they're going down and where they're actually not changing at all. Got it? What is up, Galaxians? Welcome to another episode of the Galaxy CD's Rocks and Flips Reseller Talk podcast. It is uh, it's a little confusing out there. Shipping uh, is all over the place. We've also got reselling news from eBay, Poshmark, Etsy, Mercari. It is a uh, an episode chock-a-block full of reselling news, so let's just get right to it. News updates. So a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that Pirate Ship had announced that they were not going to be passing along some of the seasonal rate increases that USPS was imposing. Last week, I mentioned that Etsy was actually lowering rates on certain priority categories for people who use their shipping labels. And this week, eBay announced similar things on their shipping program along both of those lines. So it is a, a fairly confusing time for shippers because some rates are going up, some rates are going down, some rates are not changing at all. Some are changing for the season and then some will be changing again after the first of the year. So you may want to shop around a little bit once we get into October and the on October 2nd, the seasonal USPS rate change actually goes into effect. You may want to look around again at various package sizes and zones and see which option gives you the lowest rate. This announcement from eBay from September 21st, as you may have seen, USPS, FedEx and UPS have all announced temporary increases to shipping rates and surcharges for the upcoming peak holiday season. However, not all of these published rate increases will apply when you purchase your labels on eBay. And again, that is something that both Etsy and at least uh, Pirate Ship have announced going along with as well. To help you plan ahead for the peak season, we've summarized the changes specific to eBay labels. This strikes me as being very similar, if not exactly, what Etsy and Pirate Ship both also announced, but I will summarize it for you here because that's what we do on this show. <laughs> uh, the United States Postal Service has announced temporary price increases from October 2nd, 2022 to January 22nd, 2023 for Priority Mail, Priority Mail Express, First Class Package, and Parcel Ground, Parcel Select Ground. I note that Media Mail is not included in this list. I have not been able to find anything. Last year, media mail rates did go up in this seasonal surcharge. If they don't this year, for those of us who are big media shippers, this is terrific news because ultimately, again, it's another area where prices will actually just remain the same. Most priority mail shipments will not have the announced peak rate increases when you print your labels on eBay. There is no increase for zones one to six from zero to two pounds, no increase for zones one to five, up to three pounds, no increases for zones one to four, up to 10 pounds, and no increase at all for flat rate boxes and envelopes, which is really, really good news. First class, first class packages will have the following peak rate increases, a quarter for zones one to four and 40 cents for zones five to nine. So essentially what's happening is they're cutting you a break on packages that are lower in weight, and are shipping closer to your actual shipping area. The zones that are closer to you are not going to be impacted for smaller packages. So this is really terrific news. Priority Mail Express, Parcel Select Ground, and Priority Mail for weights and zones not mentioned above will have the published rate increase. You can refer to the announcement from USPS for full details. There's a link in this particular article, and I, of course, will link to all of this information in the show notes and the video description below. Uh, they also note that there will be no per package surcharges for FedEx Express and FedEx Ground or additional surcharges for residential delivery with FedEx if you purchase that label on eBay. FedEx Ground Economy will have a per package peak surcharge, that's kind of a mouthful, of $2 in place from October 31st to January 15th. FedEx has got some stuff going on that we'll get to a little bit later in this episode. 
Uh, UPS also will not have peak surcharges this holiday season if you use eBay labels. They have, however, uh, applied a general rate change that goes into effect October 2nd. So they have a permanent rate increase that's coming out that will be on eBay along with probably everywhere else. But the peak rate surcharge for Christmas for the holiday season is not applying if you buy your labels on eBay. So again, my, my recommendation and what I'm going to do, especially early in October, is compare rates that I can get on pirate ship versus the rates I can get with Etsy and eBay and try to, without completely inconveniencing myself, because my time is valuable too, <laughs> uh, determine which one is the best option, gives me the most bang for the buck in shipping. So uh, just keep all of that in mind. Uh, eBay has also announced that like Etsy did, I think we talked about last week, new lower rates for USPS priority mail labels will go into effect September 26th, which is probably the day that you're listening to this or maybe a few days ago, depending on when you catch this show. eBay labels already provides the best possible pricing for USPS labels. And starting September 26th, it gets even better. Sellers using eBay labels will save even more on priority labels for select weights and zones with new rates up to a dollar and two cents lower than commercial pricing which is almost a verbatim, if I recall correctly, the announcement that Etsy put out. So there apparently is a new tier of shipping discounts being made available to these big companies and they are passing that, or at least some of that, if not all of it, along to us. In addition to offering great shipping discounts from all the major carriers, eBay labels is a simple and convenient way for you to purchase, edit, and print your shipping labels either individually or in bulk. That bulk shipping thing, man, I'm telling you, I, I'm constantly standing in line behind people who have 10, 15, 20 packages. They're obviously resellers and they don't use the bulk shipping thing. And I just don't understand. <laughs> that thing is so nice. I walk in, I put it on the counter. He scans one thing. I unload my bag and I get out of there. But man, if you're not using that, uh, you should definitely look into it. It is a terrific option. So speaking of FedEx, uh, they are going to raise their shipping rates permanently in January. FedEx will raise shipping rates in January and provided details last Thursday. FedEx Express, ground, and home delivery rates will increase by an average of 6.9%. However, this article over on e-commerce Bytes notes, sellers should look into details about fees as rates for some of the services they use could be higher than the cited average. Of course, it's an average, so there are some that are going to be higher and some that are going to be lower. These rates will go into effect January 2nd. It will also raise FedEx freight rates by an average of 6.9 to 7.9%, depending on the customer's transportation rate scale. I don't know many resellers, resellers that are probably using FedEx freight. That's for bigger shipments. But just be aware of that, that after the first of the year, FedEx will be raising rates. Uh, again, USPS has already announced that at the end, of the seasonal rate surcharge, January 22nd, beginning on January 23rd, the new permanent rate increase will go into effect. So again, rates are up in some cases, down in others, and in some areas are not changing at all. It's gonna take a little bit of work for us as resellers to determine what the best option is as we go through this uh, busy, or at least what we hope is a busy holiday season. Meanwhile, over in France, according to The Guardian, they have set a minimum book delivery fee in what they call an anti-Amazon struggle. There is a three pound or three euro charge that aims to give independent booksellers a chance against e-commerce firms that use a free delivery loophole. France's crusade to protect independent booksellers against huge online retailers was stepped up on Friday as the government proposed a three euro or two pounds 66 minimum delivery fee for all online book orders of less than $35. So the government is going to mandate that you have to have a minimum shipping charge of three euros. I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> it obviously is helpful for small sellers to compete against these big, the, the Amazons of the world who are offering free shipping as a, a loss leader discount to generate more business but I'm always a little bit leery of the government intervening in the marketplace. I'm not, I'm not a conservative by any stretch of the imagination, but this, this government intervention into these things 
generally leads to unforeseen consequences. This is the case because they are attempting to correct a loophole. France set up a program where you could not offer free shipping on books previously. But what happened was these big retailers like Amazon essentially offered shipping for a penny. So they got around, they were not offering free shipping, but they still were offering a shipping rate that most independent booksellers could not or would not compete with. The French law, they note, had banned free book delivery six years ago, but this loophole had allowed Amazon and other big online companies to get around the rules by charging just a single cent for shipping a book. In contrast, they note independent bookshops, in order to keep their narrow margins, had to charge much higher post office prices when delivering books, sometimes raising all the way up to seven euros. On Thursday of last week, the government moved to set more of a level playing field by fixing a minimum three euro for orders under 35 euros, the delivery price suggested by the postal regulator. During a long consultation pro process, Amazon, of course, favored a lower fee and the indie bookshops had pushed for a higher fee of at least four euros 50. The culture and finance ministries over in France said this will adapt the book industry to the digital era by restoring an equilibrium between large e-commerce platforms, which offer virtually free delivery for books, whatever the order size, and bookstores that cannot match these delivery prices. The move is part of the French notion of quote unquote cultural exceptionalism, which has long sought to shield book and independent booksellers from the ravages of free market forces. Uh, so yeah, there you go, France. Uh, if you're a seller in France, that's probably good news for you if you're an independent. Uh, in, in the UK, they've taken a little bit different approach. They actually have set a maximum discount that online shops are able to offer of a maximum of 5%. So again, let me know in the comments if you're watching over on YouTube, or you can, of course, shoot me an email at galaxycds at gmail.com. And let me know what you think of government intervention into this sort of thing. Uh, again, it's probably good news if you're a small seller over in France, but I'm always, I'm always a little leery of government intervention. Continuing down the uh, vein of shipping, eBay has launched a brand new international shipping program, which will be replacing the global shipping program. This was announced as part of the eBay Open last week. They're launching this brand new international shipping program Efficiency is a key concern. Their CEO said, we value streamlining and simplifying processes, and we know you do too. This is especially important as we help you sell globally. They did not provide a ton of details, just noting that it will replace the global shipping program. There is a landing page for it. It says, at launch, all new eligible listings will automatically default to eBay International Shipping. If you are currently using the global shipping program, you will be automatically enrolled and your listings will default to this new eBay international shipping. If you ship with another international shipping service, such as eBay international standard delivery, you will need to update your listings to take advantage of this new program. They note that it will roll out over a 12 month transition period. Sellers will be enrolled in phases over the next 12 months. You will be notified via email and in the seller hub when you are eligible. They describe the steps. Once you get the email inviting you, you'll be able to select eBay international shipping on all listings that are eligible for export. So things that are not currently in global shipping, you will be able to add to this new program. When your item sells to an international buyer, as with the global shipping program, your only responsibility will be to get it to their domestic hub. They will handle all the customs forms and international shipping for you. They say you can sell with more confidence and enjoy the profits, save on selling fees for international transactions and say goodbye to international return hassles. They note that buyers will have the choice to pay import charges, including duties and taxes at checkout or at delivery, which is different from the current global shipping program where they're forced to pay those at checkout. So from a buyer perspective, this may be a better program. I guess for my part, I don't really fully understand why they didn't just modify the global shipping program to account for all of this, but it's eBay. So it's, it's difficult to tell <laughs> what the motivation is uh, for that. They note also, and I'm, I may have something on this in a, in a minute here, uh, they will also be handling international returns in their domestic hubs, which I don't know if they do that now with global shipping. 
I, for my part, have international returns disabled, except in, of course, in the case where the item is not as described. But uh, again, let me know in the comments. If you are not a user of the global shipping program, once this new program rolls out, is it something you would be inclined to use? For my part, I've been in the global shipping program for most of my time as a reseller, as a full-time reseller at least, and I probably sell two to three items a day internationally. So it is a significant chunk of my business and something that I would not be able to function without. So I'm looking forward to see how this new program works. Poshmark made an uh, interesting announcement in the ongoing. We've talked about this a little bit on this show previously, uh, especially in the conversation I had with Kitty Reeds about whatnot and live auctions, uh, also with Kelly Reese Luis. Live auctions are becoming more and more of a thing. People like to do them. People, buyers like to participate them in them. Poshmark has announced a new program that they are currently beta testing called a Posh Show. We are currently beta testing with a small invite only US audience and plan to release more broadly once we have gathered feedback and made improvements. Note, please check back for updates. You can learn more on their blog. Uh, it talks about how you can host a show, how you can view a show and how you can show do posh show auctions. Select sellers can create and schedule posh shows to sell auction and promote listings from their closet or connect directly with their shoppers. And then it lays out some instructions, which I will not go over in detail here. If you are a seller on Poshmark, just know that this is something that's available to select buyers by invite or select sellers rather by invite only, but it will be coming to more and more people. People, They can be scheduled up to three months in advance. So if you know that you want to plan a big show and promote it, you can do that in advance. So pretty cool as another of these platforms jumps on this live auction train. eBay, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, announced some time back that they are also looking at a program like this. I have not seen any more details on that, but this is going to continue to be a growing piece of the resale business. Etsy is making another change. Now you will be able to decide which items from your shop are returnable. Right now they have a global policy. You either accept or do not accept returns. They are going to now uh, drill down to listing specific policies to give you more flexibility over your business. Earlier this year, they note, we let you know that we'd be committing to bringing you tools that give you more flexibility to run your business on your terms. We know that as a creative business owner, you sell a range of unique items, some of which may or may not be returnable like custom made or one of a kind items. And we've heard from sellers that only being able to set one return policy doesn't meet your needs. So we work directly with sellers to listen and learn on how we could improve the tools that you use to set your shop policies. That's why we're excited to announce that you can now set different return policies for each listing in your shop instead of just one return policy for your entire shop. The Etsy sellers are pretty happy about that, I think. Uh, this will all go into effect on October 31st. They have they have a, a notice on their homepage, on their dashboard about this program and it's upcoming. You'll start to receive more and more information. So if you're a seller on Etsy, on Etsy rather, this is a pretty interesting program. However, on the downside, uh, this is something that pretty much all of the sites do. eBay has done it with promoted listings and sponsored listings. Amazon has done it for years where when you search for something and you go to a listing, it suggests other competing sellers products on your page. People don't like it with good reason. Etsy has now, they've taken a slightly different approach to it, but they, according to this article on e-commerce bites are distracting buyers with search filters inside of a listing. So you're about to click on add to cart button for a pair of dangle earrings on Etsy, but wait, Underneath the photo, you see more options to keep browsing other listings. You can filter by price or esti uh, uh, estimated arrival date. And then it gives you a range of options under $25, 25 to 75, 75 to 100, ETA by a certain date, and so on. So you're looking at something, you think you're ready to buy, and right below the listing, I think if you're watching on YouTube, yeah, there's actually a picture of it here where right in the listing, just beneath the photo, you can see these filters where you can make a change and it will bring up 
other listings. It doesn't actually open a new window. It actually just stays in that same window and leaves your listing. So as a seller, this is all good for Etsy. I totally get it. It gives them an opportunity to expose a potential buyer to more options. More options are not necessarily always better. There is a certain paralysis by analysis. You start to look at too many things and all of a sudden you just decide, nah, you know what, <laughs> I'm not buying anything. So there is that danger as well. But the fact that rather than opening this in a new browser window or a new tab, it actually just leaves your listing completely is problematic. I hope that Etsy will change that particular piece so that at least your listing stays active so that the potential buyer can quickly go back to it because if they don't, uh, this will represent potentially a lot of lost business for individual sellers. Again, if you're a seller on Etsy, let me know in the comments what you think about that. Bad news over on Mercari. They announced that effective November 20 or November 1st, rather 2022, they will change their payment processing fee, which is currently 2.9% plus 30 cents to 2.9% plus 50 cents per transaction. Uh, it goes into effect on November 1st, but it may take up to two weeks for your individual listings to update. So you may have a window there where you're actually going to pay the lower fee. I doubt that that will affect a lot of people. I would assume with something like this, it'll roll out fairly quickly and everybody will be in it. Uh, you may recall a couple of weeks ago, I announced on this show that Bonanza had added a transaction fee of a quarter to their system, which they don't even process payments. Payments are all processed by PayPal, which of course has their own transaction fee. So again, we're just, it's 20 cents per transaction. But if you're doing a ton of transactions over on Mercari, that's gonna add up over time. And it's just another one of those things I'm not sure, and if you work for one of these firms and you're listening to this podcast, you can let me know, but what are the inflationary pressures on a platform like Mercari that would cause them to raise their transaction fee by 20 cents a transaction? They don't, they don't, they don't have any warehouses. They don't have any a fleet of vehicles. They have nothing, to my mind, that's facing inflationary pressure that should cause them to raise their rates. Yet again, all of these places are. Bonanza announced it a couple of weeks ago, and now Mercari, November 1st, your per transaction fee is going up to 2.9% plus 50 cents, an increase of 20 cents, which is a pretty big jump, really, when you think about it, from 30 to 50. Um, again, they're quick to point out, there's no listing or monthly fees, there's no hidden, hidden fees, yada, 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 and that you only pay a processing fee, of course, when a transaction is actually processed and a customer has made a purchase. So you're not paying in advance or anything like that, but it's just another chink out of our bottom line. Lastly, uh, eBay did have eBay open last week. If you attended, you can let me know again down in the comments what did you attend eBay Open and what did you think of their announcements? It sounds like in a lot of cases, they were kind of long on ideas and short on details, but they did announce some new features. Again, this is over on e-commerce bytes. Uh, they're working to make some changes in their authenticity guarantee program. They're working with carrier partners to lower the cost for items that go through their authentication hubs starting later this year. Authenticity guarantee eligible sneakers in the U.S. Sellers will automatically get a label for their shipment. No more need to figure out which carrier and services to select. I'm, again, I'm not sure, depending on what the cost looks like on this, if they are able to come up with some kind of fixed rate that is less than you could get yourself through normal commercial means, then more power to them. But again, it's a, a situation where they're taking choice away from sellers in how we ship things to eBay. So they say um, buyers will also get a consistent shipping price, so no more need to worry about that either. They note they will be rolling out uh, additional this to additional categories and markets next year. So that's coming up if you are a seller that uses the Authenticity Guarantee Program. It's going to start with sneakers, but eventually we'll probably move to watches and all the other ones. Uh, they also announced a new experience in parts and accessories, which is one of their largest, largest categories by bringing fitment front and center. We're improving how search uses fitment 
to ensure that shoppers can trust the results. This is in the automotive category to make sure that what you order will actually fit your vehicle. It's been an ongoing problem for probably forever on eBay and they're attempting, they apparently they bought a, a tool from another company to help determine auto parts compatibility. And this will link in with their new program to improve search using Fitment. So uh, they've also noted, this was interesting and I don't know if this applies to all categories because again, this is fairly vague, but Ashish Shabra, eBay's vice president of global markets presented that the importance of photos and referred to the news that was announced by the CEO, Jimmy Iannone, that eBay will now allow sellers to upload 24 images free of charge rather than the current limit of 12. There's no indication when this goes into effect and or which categories this might apply to or if it applies to all of them. 24 pictures is a bunch, folks. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm going above and beyond when I put up 12 because I see a lot of sellers that are still using stock photos or no photos at all. So 24 is a big jump, but hey, there, there have been times where with a particular item, having a couple of more photos available to show particular flaws or highlight certain things with an item would be helpful. And 12 has been a bit limiting. 24 is a big number. So kudos to them for that. They also noted that videos are now what they call retail standard, and they had begun allowing sellers to upload videos last year. New this year, store subscribers will be able to upload videos to their storefronts on eBay. I actually have a daily reminder in my seller hub to complete my store by adding a video. I suppose I should do that, introduce myself to all the buyers, uh, but it's just not something that I've done yet. Is that something that you would add to your store or have you already added that to your store? Uh, they note videos will be mostly ramped up for all seller sellers by the end of September. So within the next week, uh, pretty much all store sellers, store subscribers should be able to do videos. They also discussed marketing tools for sellers, uh, including newsletters for store subscribers and the ability to segment buyers into categories by buyer groups. So if you've got particular buyers that only seem to buy one category, you could set up a category of auto parts buyers or CD buyers and send specialized newsletters just to that market segment. So that's kind of an interesting tool. I don't know that I actually have anybody that's subscribed to my newsletter. So I don't know if that's something that you use or not, but uh, it's any, any tool to help you market directly to your own existing buyers to me is a good option. So they also said, and I, we've been hearing this now for quite some time that eBay would begin reducing unpaid items by collecting payment information during the best offer submission flow. So once a seller accepted an offer, payment would be processed. Some buyers are already in the pilot program and eBay will ramp it up. Wait for it after the holidays. I don't know about you, but I have had a real spate of unpaid items over the last couple of weeks, not it's not dozens, but normally I have not had any. I've had very few items over the last year that I've had to cancel for unpaid. And in the last probably two weeks, I bet I've had half a dozen, which is a significant increase for me from virtually none. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I have had probably four or five instances where I've got an offer and in the offer, there's a note from eBay that the buyer had already selected their payment method and I would be paid immediately. It's not quite immediately, but it's usually within 45 minutes or so. So it's fairly quick compared to potentially waiting four days or not getting paid <laughs> uh, at all. So uh, that's going on again, a ton of stuff this week. I'm, I don't have a wet sold segment because I just, I didn't really have anything all that exciting. And there was just so much news that I wanted to get to. Let me know what you think about all these shipping increases, rates are going up, rates are going down, rates are not changing at all, depending on what you sell and where it's going. And man, it's just, it's messy out there. Hey, if you found anything in this episode, particularly useful or interesting, if you're listening uh, or watching over on YouTube, please do me a favor and smack that thumbs up button. Uh, recommend this podcast to a friend. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any of the platforms where I allow you to leave a review, 
a, uh, would appreciate a five-star review and any comments that you'd like to share if you're not currently a subscriber to the channel or a follower of the podcast on your platform of choice, please consider doing that as well. I would love to have you along. That is all I got for this week's uh, news. I hope you had a terrific week. I know I last week I complained about business being bad for me. This week was better. It's not what I would call great, but it did uh, move in the right direction at least. So it was a little bit better week. There just wasn't anything huge, no big, big sales. Uh, but it's it's been a little bit better week. I hope you have had a great week. And until next time, it's time to sell. Thanks, guys. You have been listening to the Galaxy CDs Rocks and Flips Reseller Talk podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will catch you again next time.